2022 has been crazy so far. Golden Gate Warriors won the NBA final again. The Power of the Dog won the Golden Globe Best Film. Huh? Oh, sorry, wrong intro. Let's try it again. 2022 has been crazy so far. The macro economy dragging down all indices and stocks across the board. Gas prices are $6 per gallon in the Bay Area. The Fed funds rate went from virtually zero to 1.75% in June. My design thinking driven portfolio, <clears throat> spoiler alert, did not manage to continue the streak from last year and is now down 41% since last July. Don't freak out yet, I'm gonna dive into what happened there. How did I feel about it? Is my strategy no longer working? What did I learn? How can I iterate next? Then I'm gonna walk through how I am turning this learning into my V5 strategy. I also give an update with my investing plan moving forward as a follow-up video that I made earlier this year. What am I buying? What am I not buying? What am I gonna do with my money? And all the reasoning behind all those decisions. Lastly, I have a new video release schedule and I will save that good news in the end as the wrap up of this video. And that's the itinerary for this video as I'm talking about my investing journey. Get it? Never mind. For those who are new here, my design thinking driven portfolio is all about focusing on the need, the end goal. Prototyping, iterating is all about framing investing as a design project and tackling it with my design skills as a designer. I share not only when my portfolio goes up, but also when it goes down. Like in today's video, full transparency, I'm not trying to brag about my one-time beating SPY fluke. I wanna showcase how I apply design thinking into investing to beat SPY quarter over quarter, year over year. So stick around, learn something new, enjoy some cringy moment from my own mistake, and have some fun. Just like my other finance videos, you don't have to smash the like button just yet. Do that in the end if you find this video useful or insightful. Hold me accountable. Now let's get into it, y'all. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justin. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. First, let's take a look at my design thinking driven portfolio performance from July 1st, 2021 to July 1st, 2022. The math here is simple. We take the end value divided by the sum of the starting value and all the money that I put into the account, which includes my direct deposit from my paycheck and the money that out of my own pocket. Then we will have a close enough approximation of my year over year return, which is a whopping staggering negative 41%. Hmm. And of course it's significantly behind all the index fund benchmarks especially SPY. So what happened there? This is the juicy part. There are basically two things. One, I did not fully calculate the downside before placing any trade. And second, I used margin loans in the wrong way. It's going to get a little bit more technical here now, but stay with me, I'll try to go slow and I promise you're gonna learn something new. My first mistake was that I opened a lot of Tesla put credit spreads position without really doing the math how much money I could technically lose. Since with a credit spread, you receive money first, which gives you an illusion that you just made money out of thin air. Pure magic. All I saw in my account was that the collateral for the put credit spreads would be deducted from my buying power instead of my own cash. My cash position never dropped. The second very deceptive solution. When the credit spreads went south, I lost all the collateral and that was when it started eating into my cash. Until my cash went to negative, it started to eat into my gain from last year because I had to sell shares to cover it. With those two beautiful illusions and my careless lack of calculation, I was like, oh, I can just open Tesla, put credit spread, get a lot of money, buy more Tesla shares, infinite money glitch. So in March this year, I opened a lot of Tesla put credit spread when Tesla was soaring high just before it nose dove back to the 700 range. Outrageous. And you know what happened next. And that gracefully transitioned to my second mistake. Just cover the basics here. A margin account is essentially you can borrow money from the brokerage firm to buy stocks and trade options. It's pretty simple, high level. In TD Ameritrade, if I have $5,000 cash without margin, I will only have $5,000 buying power, the same as my cash position. However, with margin enabled, my buying power can become $10,000, double my cash. You can see how it might start to get a little bit confusing once you trade options with it, especially credit spreads. And remember, the other 5,000 in the buying power is a loan. 
It's not my money. If I use it, I will have to return it at some point. If you ever open a put credit spread, the collateral for it will be deducted from the buying power instead of cash. And since I have a margin account with TD Ameritrade, I had a lot of buying power, which is the third deceiving illusion that I did not recognize. I was like, oh, put credit spreads makes money fast and it only uses my buying power, never my cash. And I have so much buying power. I can make lots of money without costing me anything. Then everything started to go wrong. I ended up realizing I use a lot of loan and have to sell shares to cover it. I think borrowing money to buy stocks is fine as long as my upcoming paychecks in the near future can cover it. If I see a great deal of Tesla stock at 620, and I don't have any cash, I might just borrow 620 to buy one share of Tesla and next month when my paychecks comes in, it's gonna cover the 620. All good, that's fine. What's not fine is that that triple illusion made me borrow so much money, too much money, that I cannot pay back for months with my paycheck. What I feel stupid was that I could be so blind, so out of my mind, not doing any calculation, thinking that loan, that buying power is free money to use, then I ended up over leveraging without even realizing it until it haunts me. <sighs> the bright side is I see through all those three illusions and it revealed two things that I did not do great at. I also think it's pointless to feel sad and let all the negativity in at this point. The damage has been done. Do you think the cost is too high for me to learn to do the math and considering the downside the worst cases? Yes, but sometimes you really just have to feel the pain to really grasp the concept and let all that get into your head. Overall, I'm fine because the fundamentals of my strategy still hold true. So in fact, I'm actually excited about e-trading to V5 with what I learned here and see how it pans out a better return in the future. At the end of the day, investing is long term. This could be just a blip in the total span of the journey looking back five years from now. Those mistakes would be the perfect segue to the next part. What did I learn? How did I iterate? How do those mistakes shape my V5 strategy? Here's how. I turn mistakes, errors, and failures into learnings, which I translate into actionable items. And then I add them to the next iteration, which has become the V5 strategy. Let me give you an example. My first mistake was that I did not fully calculate the downside before placing any trade. What I learned is that I just have to do the math every time before I buy or sell anything which is also the action. I need to calculate the downside every time. So for example, if I plan to open this 650, 660 Tesla put credit spread, I will need to do the math and acknowledge that I will potentially lose $630. I will have to ask myself, am I okay with that? Do I have 630 to lose? Is that 630 coming from my cash or the margin loan? If I'm using the margin loan, is $630 less than the maximum amount of money that I can borrow. For my second mistake, I use margin loans in the wrong way. So flipping that will be my learning. I need to use margin loans in the right way. To make it more actionable, to define what is the right way, I set up some rules and guardrails. The total amount of margin loans I can take at a time will be one of these two cases, whichever one that is less. Number one, three month worth of direct deposit from my paycheck or 29% of my portfolio value. That's the maximum. Whichever number is lower, that's the maximum amount of loan I can take. For example, if every month I get paid, I set aside $1,000 for investing, which means I can borrow up to $3,000. It's just so that anything can go wrong does go wrong, I can still pay everything back in three months. For the second option, if my portfolio value is already worth $10,000, 29% of which will be 2.9K. This will give me a buffer if my portfolio value drops 70%. I'm still safe from getting a margin call. So in two calculations, we have two numbers, 3K and 2.9K. And then of course I would take a smaller one, which is 2.9K. So 2.9K is the maximum amount of margin loan that I could take. So those are the two things I will add to my V5 iteration, my V5 strategy. I don't want to make this video super long, so I will skip the rest of the V5 details. If anyone is interested in that, drop a comment and I can make another video for my V5 strategy. Now let's get into my investing plan and see if anything changes since my last video in January. In that video, I mentioned that I will add $85 every month to my high yield savings account to up my emergency fund amount to adjust for inflation. That is still very on track and I will keep doing that until the end of 2022. In the crypto realm, I paused my $80 per month investment in Bitcoin and Ethereum 
because crypto winter is here plus because of some regulations i can no longer add any more bitcoins or ethereum or any other cryptos actually into my interest earning blockfi account so if crypto is not growing i cannot earn interest i will just pause it for now but i'm still using my blockfi credit card which gives me 1.5 percent bitcoin reward so technically i'm still buying bitcoins to some degree if you're interested in that credit card referral link in the description down below but back to my crypto investment if i pause it where would my 80 dollars go and all that actually goes to a new holding of mine jeppy take a symbol j-e-p-i i started jeppy on Robinhood as a side strategy specifically targeting future cash flow i have been buying every day dollar cost average in you can see it on Robinhood. i will cover more about that in another video because i have realized something else about dividend investing next there are two more things i want to do one is i want to learn about hedging and use it as insurance what can i do to protect my account from the downside with this surging inflation and interest rate on the top of slumping savings rate and negative gdp wouldn't it be nice to not let my account drop every month wouldn't it be nice to just spend 5k buying an 800 tesla put in january this year and see it worth 10.6k in july so i can just offset the drop of tesla stock a little bit it would be nice it would be very nice i also want to learn about deriving my own price target the fair market value of the stock of a company which will give me more reference points of whether a company is under or over value and what strike prices i will sell call and put options and that is my plan for now as for the new release schedule i'm planning to do a portfolio update every six months because i realized i keep learning new things i keep using my design skills to iterate my strategy so stay tuned there will be more to share i will do it in a six month basis maybe i can do an update every quarter later on but now six months is the plan if you learn anything anything new destroy the like button for the youtube algorithm to support this very very small channel and consider subscribing so you don't miss any future finance videos option trading is fun and could be very useful in growing your account do you ever wonder how it works behind the scene and how it plays out in real life i've used my best design thinking and craftsmanship skills to capture all that in these videos for you check them out right there keep using design to square up your finances see you on the next video choose